1965, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, a Vedic scholar and holy man in the renounced order of life, left India for America to transform a bold vision into a historical reality of global dimension. To fulfill the desire of generations of Indian saints who wished to see India's timeless spiritual culture benefit the entire world, Srila Prabhupada left India and sailed to the United States. When he arrived by freighter, he was practically penniless, but after nearly a year of struggle, he established the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in July of 1966. In the years that followed, the society grew rapidly and Hare Krishna became familiar to millions of people. Srila Prabhupada became the focal point for the public's interest in the Hare Krishna movement, but he was never too busy to carefully answer any question. And, with each and every encounter, he would open the doors to the ancient philosophical and spiritual knowledge of India. An Acharya is one who teaches by example. By his personal example, Srila Prabhupada demonstrated that the soul, the self, is naturally eternal, full of knowledge and full of transcendental bliss. When a living being is awakened to his original constitutional position of Krishna consciousness, he becomes filled with sublime, exalted spiritual emotions that have no material counterpart. As a great self-realized and God-conscious saint, Srila Prabhupada often exhibited the spiritual happiness that Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita. That sacred and ancient fountainhead of wisdom has this to say about the final state of human perfection. In that joyous state, one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness and enjoys himself through transcendental senses. Established thus, one never departs from the truth, and upon gaining this, he knows there is no greater gain. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, you founded the Hare Krishna movement some seven years ago, in 1967, did you not? Yes. Um, in a capsule, what is the movement? Uh, the movement is to awaken God consciousness of the human being. The uh, human being is distinct, distinguished from the animals, that the animals cannot understand what is God. Mm -hmm. And if the human being also uh, does not understand what is God, then he is enemy. I see. And so <laughs> your movement is to bring about an understanding of God yes. among human beings. Yes. And Hare Krishna means what? Hare Krishna means addressing uh, the energy of God. Mm -hmm. Hare means the energy of God and Krishna means God. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you were here yesterday and to attend your annual festival that yeah. was held here in Golden Gate Park, and we were there too. Mm. And in fact, here it is. Mm. Um, a few thousand people uh, came out to hear it. How many people are now uh, disciples um, of the Krishna consciousness movement? Uh, dedicated life, about 10,000. About 10,000 dedicated in ones. In the Western world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Your Grace, is there any significance in all at all in the shaved head? Why are heads shaved? We keep ourselves very clean, that's all. Oh, it's just a cleanliness thing? Yes. Is there any significance in the color as, of the at robe? Least, at least uh, at the present moment, people think that uh, by keeping long hair, it becomes very beautiful. I see. Yes. So we are against that. Mm -hmm. Just as simple as that. <laughs> is there any significance in the yellow robes? Uh, Yellow robe uh, is the dress those who are dedicated. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, that, that is, it it could very well have been a blue robe. It's oh, just yeah. something that, that was arrived this, at. The, this um, saffron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Your Grace, why do you feel that so many people are pulling away from the traditional religions in this country, such as Christianity and so forth, and going uh, for the 
trying to understand the Eastern religions, we hear a lot of swamis and gurus and, mm -hmm. and uh, other type of um, yogi and so forth. Why do you feel that people are pulling away from the traditional Christian standards here? But uh, we, we see that the um, Christian churches, especially I've seen in London, mostly closed. People are not interested, or the Christian leaders, they cannot make them interested. Why? Did Christianity fail the people, which is why they're turning to other things? Or? I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You say that Hare Krishna consciousness uh, pretty much takes the absolute truths from the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, mm -hmm. and the Vedic. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. Reli religion means to understand God. I understand, but do you feel that in, in getting truths from various places like the Bible and the Koran and so forth, don't you run into conflicts at all or contradictions in those particular philosophies? No, I don't find any conflict because the ultimate goal is God. So you have to understand God and try to love Him. So you can go through any religious process. If the goal is attained, that you understand what is God, and you try to love him, then your life is perfect. Why do we see so many of your followers chanting um, yeah. almost all the time? Chanting means to keep association with God always. So you have to audibly chant yes. Hare Krishna? Yes. This is, this is uh, transcendental, transcendental vibration. Just like a uh, radio message, if you keep contact with the radio message, mm -hmm. Uh, then you know everything what is going on outside. Similarly, this transcendental sound, Hare Krishna, if you chant, then you keep connection with God directly. Thank you very much, um, Your Divine Grace. It's Thank been you. our privilege to, to talk with you and to meet you. Thank you. And hope that we can see you again when you return. Hare Krishna. Yeah. We'll be back with more news in just a moment. Deva Tripting Hajata Sadaiva Deva Tripting Hajata Sadaiva Mande Buddha Sita Ramadabinam Mande Buddha Sita Yes, <laughs> very much happy because these American boys are helping. It is due to their cooperation. The movement is spread all over the world. Where will you go from here? Uh, in America? Mm -hmm. What is the date where I entered? In Hawaii? She's asking where you will go where after you go? Dallas. Where will you visit? Oh, from Dallas, I'll go to New Virginia. West Virginia? West West Virginia? West Virginia? <laughs> I'm there and uh -huh. Are you are you pleased with the Krishna movement in the United States? Do you think it's growing? What do you think? I think it is. Yeah. And this pleases you. It is growing very fast. <laughs> do you Not think only growing, but growing very fast at the flowers of your country, the young generation. They're taking it very seriously. These boys, these girls, they're taking it very serious. Do you think that the children you see here will carry on? We are, we are creating another generation of Krishna consciousness. So, we will continue. What does Krishna offer that uh, some of the other religions, religious beliefs of the world? Krishna is God. So, other religion who follow all consciousness, so there is no difference. It may be different from name, but religion means God consciousness. Without God consciousness, there is no religion. And what the, what does worshiping in you know in your way uh, is it any better than worshiping in another way? Is it a more direct contact with Krishna? And, and well, every way is. Nice, provided the followers are nice. Unfortunately, the, the principles are not followed. Just like in Christian religion, it is said, thou shalt not kill. But killing is very good thing here in the Christian world. The killing is So many slaughterhouses. 
that is not Christianity. But followers, they do not follow the rules and regulations. That is regulated. Otherwise, it is very nice. Our also principle is no meat eating. That means there is no killing of animals. Every religion says like that. But the followers do not follow. The Krishna religion teaches that women are to be subservient to men always. Why? Uh, the Krishna religion teaches that women should be subservient, should be subordinate to men. He's asking why. Well, not should be, they are, by nature. What do you think, your position? I don't believe in that, of course. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> but you uh, voluntarily become subservient to a man. That is the nature. Does that make them less of a uh, being? They are seeking to become subservient, attracting man. Take me as sub subservient. <laughs> that is natural. Uh, even even psychologically, it is uh, analyzed that the brain of man is up. They have seen up to sixty-four rounds, whereas the brain of woman. They have not found more than 36 hours. But women live longer than men. Huh? Women live longer than men. Not necessarily. So yes, we've got you. Sometimes <laughs> My grandmother lived about 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> My ma. <laughs> so sometimes it happens. <laughs> you how old? It how is not restricted among women. There are men also. How old is the. Uh, the movement? Well, from historical point of view, it is about 5,000 years old. Why has it just begun to really catch on in the Western world? I mean, just recently, in you know, recent years, has it begun to sweep uh, the Western world? Why is this? The Western world, the younger generation, were being frustrated, the hippie movement. So, when they saw something, tangible, they accepted it. Do you, what, what things would, if, if everyone in the United States believed in, uh, in Krishna to the, and to the extent that you do, what would happen to this country? What would, how would it be transformed? Uh, oh, they would be very happy and peaceful. <laughs> there would be no more hippies. <laughs> What, what, what would you describe as a hippie? Someone who smokes. You know better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Something extraordinary. <laughs> how do you respond to this? What? How should people who follow your, you know, uh, your beliefs? How should they respond to other people who are criticizing them and, uh, you know, for the way that they? Uh, this criticism. You criticize me. I criticize you. That is going on. Even there is no change of dress. It is man's nature to become envious, to criticize others. That is material nature. So it's you think that they're envious because, because they're criticizing? Yes. Uh -huh. Because of the happiness that the people have? Certainly. Oh. Sometimes they inquire, are you Americans? Because they were never saw Americans so peaceful. And in the priests also, they very much appreciate in, uh, in Melbourne, the bishop of Melbourne and the head of the Scottish church and many church people, they very much appreciate them. They invited me and talk in a, in a uh, society of that. Uh, San Francis, there were hundreds of fathers the meeting was attended. I spoke for one hour and they very much appreciated. I brought it for ten minutes and they accepted it. And Reverend Powell here gave declaration that we have no alarm from the Krishna movement. 
Do you, uh, this is your third visit to Dallas, is that correct? Yeah. I think three or four. Uh, uh, third. Yeah. Why, was, why was Dallas selected as the uh, point to establish uh, the school? I believe this is the first school, isn't it, in the United States to be established? Uh, why was Dallas particularly chosen for, for the school? Uh, it's Krishna's Bound? choice. Krishna's choice. He yeah. chose, uh, chose Dallas. Yes, we got a nice house. And we accepted it. So it was Krishna's choice. Where does the Krishna National or the International Krishna Organization get its funds from simply donations? They've been criticized occasionally for being very wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is our reputation. Uh, in, even in Indian Parliament this question was raised. So these Hare Krishna people fabulously rich where they get money. Somebody suspected the we are getting bribes from American government. <laughs> <laughs> but is that CIA? So if you are theologians, then you must know what is God and abide by God. <coughs> what do you think, Dr. Judah? Pardon? What do you think, this proposition? Yes, well, I think, I think you're, you're quite right. I think that, that it is, certainly in our day and age, many of us don't really know God. <laughs> then, then he's not theologist. He, he, <coughs> he's theosophical. We know, we know about God, but we do not know God. I, I would agree. That, that is theosophy. Theosophy is they, they are thinking there is something superior. But who is that superior? They are searching. The same thing. A, a, a boy, he knows I have a father. But who is my father? I don't know. But that you have to ask the father. Alone he cannot understand. So our proposition is that if you do not know God, and here is God, Krishna, why don't you accept it? You do not know, first of all. And if I present here is God, then why don't you accept it? What is the answer? We are presenting God, here is God. Big, big Acharyas have accepted. Ramanucharya, Madhya Acharya, Krishna Swami, Lord Chaitanya, and our disciple succession, my Guru Maharaj, and I am preaching, He is God. I am not presenting a God uh, whimsical. I am presenting a God who is recognized. So why don't you accept? What is it? Difficult. I suppose one of the difficulties for certainly many in the older generation is that we, we follow certain patterns of life and the... And it's not serious about and, uh, it is difficult to change. And this is the pro great problem. Uh, Therefore, Krishna said, Sarvadharman Paritajya Mahavekam Sar. You have to give up. So if you are not prepared to give up, then you cannot accept God. I think you're being a little unfair to Dr. Crossley. Uh, I think what you say is true, that, uh, that it's the most important thing we can do is to seek and know God. 
but I, I don't think it's right to say that uh, it's a bad thing to study how other people or how no, man has... I don't has, say uh, bad thing. Yeah. I say if you're That's serious what, about God, now here is God. That's what a university in part is for, to study about how people no, have no, thought like, on different matters. I would say if you are seeking after something, if you get that something, mm. why don't you accept? Do you believe that Christ said that Krishna was his father? The name may be different. Mm -hmm. It's like in our country we say this flower something, he said something. Mm -hmm. But subject matter must be the same. Name is not. You can say any different mm -hmm. as you understand. The God is one. God cannot be two. You may give him different names. That is different. But God is one. God cannot be two. You pay tax to the government, and the tax is distributed in so many departments. So it is not your business to go every department and pay tax. Pay to the treasury of the government, it will be this. This is intelligence. And if you say that why shall I pay to the treasury house? I shall pay the, this department, that department, that department, that department. You can go on, but it will never be sufficient. Neither complete. So you may love humanity, but because you do not love Krishna, therefore do not love the cows, you send them to So your love will remain defective. It will never be complete. And if you love Krishna, then you love in this small ant. He will not interest him to kill him with an ant. That is real love. I agree with you that we love very badly and we yeah. slaughter the animals. So badly love is not love. But is the converse true, that we chant very well and that we can love Krishna even when we cannot love our fellow people? We are chanting, we are also working. It is not that. We are simply sitting down and chanting. Because we are chanting, therefore we are loving everyone. That's a fact. These Hare Krishna chanters, they never agree to kill any animal, even a plant, because they know everything is part and parcel of God. Why unnecessarily one should be killed? That is love. Love means never killing? There are so many things. It is one of the items. Yes, that is one. Do you kill your own son? Why? Because you love him. Explain the other side of it. Uh, the uh, the fact that, of course, the Bhagavad Gita was has its setting on a battlefield in which Krishna <laughs> enjoins Arjuna. That killing and poor animal who is supplying meal, you are drinking meal, your mother, and you are killing. This killing and that killing is not the same thing. According to Vedic civilization, the cow is to be given a special protection. Why? It is recommended 
para de carro. It does not say a father anymore. Srila Prabhupada, you are aware that they advanced the argument of mesmerization against chanting. The That's good. That's good. If you can mesmerize, that is, he, he, uh, Dr. Judah has admitted that you can mesmerize the drug addicted hippies and engage them in understanding Krishna. It is a great achievement. <laughs> yes. It's not mesmerization. <laughs> Whatever it may be. Dr. Judah has admitted. So, if mesmerization is for good, why not accept it? If it is for bad, then it is anything. If it is doing good, why not accept it? Hmm? What do you think? I don't know how to react. I think I agree with you. If it is good, it's, everything good should be accepted. <laughs> no problem. I, see, I, I I keep wondering how you're so sure you know what good is, particularly when it comes to war. I would be a little more worried, I think, that... Uh, what is that war? Well, when you were telling that sometimes war is necessary, I should think that it's important to know how to decide when... Well, unnecessary means... You cannot expect in this material world all saintly persons. Mm. There are bad elements. So if a bad element comes to attack you, is it not your duty to fight and protect? Uh, so it just may be, though, that mine are the bad elements, and I keep thinking that other people are the bad elements. No. <laughs> Right. Even God has got this discrimination. He says, Paritranaya sadhuna vinasaya to dhrishkita. There are bad elements. In God's mind there is good element, bad element. So we are part and parcel of God. We must have also the same sentiment. We cannot avoid it. The body is not divine. Oh, he's saying that when we say everything is part of God, the body, the body is, a, is an exception. He says the body then is an exception. The no. body is not part of God. No, why? Body is also part. Yes, yeah, the body is also part. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Yes, yeah. it is another energy. I see. Inferior energy. Inferior energy. Everything is God's energy. Mm. The body is also God's energy. The best use of the body is God's energy should be utilized for God. Then it is body is spiritualized. Body is also God's energy. And if it is engaged in God's service, then the body is no more bad bargain. It is a good bargain. Sangshara <laughs> 